So let's have a look at the Next.js key features and benefits. And whilst we go through them, it will also become clearer why I like to call Next.js a full stack framework as well. I would say the most important key feature Next.js adds is the built-in server-side rendering support. Now, in case it's not clear what server-side rendering means, server-side rendering is all about preparing the content of a page on the server instead of on the client. If you take a standard React application built with just React, then if you inspect the source code of a loaded React page, you will notice that the page is actually pretty empty right from the start. You only have a basic HTML skeleton there and then some entry point, some div with an ID root typically into which the React app is loaded and rendered. But all of that rendering is done by React. And since React is a client side JavaScript library, all that rendering happens on the client. So in the browsers of your users, it's not happening on the server. And as a result, the actual HTML code, which is sent from the server to the client when a user visits your page, is pretty empty. Now, that is not necessarily a big problem. It depends on what you're building, but it can be a problem. Because, for example, if your page also fetches some data from a server that should be displayed, like a list of meetups, as we're doing it here, then the user might initially see some loading state, a flickering page for a fraction of a second whilst the request is on its way fetching the data. Because data fetching only begins once the JavaScript code executed on the client. And then we still have to wait for the response of that outgoing request. Simply because the page which we requested did not yet contain that data. Now, again, that is not necessarily a problem, but of course, it might not be the user experience you want to offer. Now, it can also be a problem if search engine optimization matters to you. Now, this does not matter for all pages. If you have an administration dashboard, which is only reached by logging in, then search engine optimization does not matter there because search engines will never see that dashboard. It's highly user specific and you need to log in anyways. But if you have a public facing page with a lot of content that should be found through search engines, then of course, search engine optimization does matter. So for example, here where we got this list of meetups, we see those meetups as a user, but the search engine crawlers will actually only see that initially empty HTML page, which we're getting from a server. So that content is not picked up by search engine crawlers and that can be a problem. And that's where server-side rendering could help us. If that page would be pre-rendered on the server, if that data fetching somehow could be done on the server when a request hits that server, and then the finished page would be served to our users and to the search engine crawlers, then users would not have that flickering loading state and search engines would see our page content. And that's the problem server-side rendering solves. It allows us to pre-render React pages, React components on a server. Now, React.js actually has built-in features that allow you to add server-side rendering, but it can be tricky to get that right. And it requires extra setup from your side. With Next.js, that becomes way easier because Next.js has built-in server-side rendering it automatically pre-renders your pages. And that means that with Next.js, if you build a standard Next.js app without any extra setup from your side, if you visit such a page, it was pre-rendered on the server by default out of the box. And that means that it's great for a search engine optimization because search engines see what our users see and our users also have a better initial load experience because they don't have that initial flickering. If we inspect the source code of a Next.js page, so of a page in a Next.js app, then we see that there, it's not just an empty HTML skeleton, but instead 
all the content is already there in that HTML page, which we got back from the server. Now it is worth noting that with Next.js, after this initial load, after this initial request, we still get a standard React app running in the browser, a standard single page application even. Subsequent navigation actions by the user, so when the user then browses our page and navigates around, those actions are all handled by React in the browser to have this fast interactive user experience which we typically want to offer with React. Which was one of the reasons why you would use React typically. So we still get that, but for the initial load, we have that pre-rendered page. And that in the end means that client-side and server-side code is kind of blended together with Next.js. And of course, in this course, you are going to learn how things are blending together, how you can write code that runs on the server and how you can write code that runs on the client. You are, of course, going to learn all about that. And this is therefore one of the major features that makes up Next.js, this built-in server-side rendering, which on its own probably would already be a strong benefit or a strong reason for why you might want to use Next.js for building your React projects instead of just React.js. But it's not the only key feature. Another very nice feature added by Next.js is file-based routing. Now, what does this mean? In traditional React, you don't even have a router. And just to be clear, routing means that we give the user the illusion of having multiple pages. When we navigate around and we load different pages, then that's the job of a router. Typically, we use React router for that. This router basically watches the URL and when it changes, it basically prevents the browser default of sending a request to some backend server and instead renders different content on the page with React, a different component in the end. That's what routing is. We change what's visible on the screen based on the URL without sending an extra request to a server because we stay in that single page application, which we typically build with React. Now that's routing. And typically with React, routing is set up in code. That code could look something like this, depending on the version of React router you're using. Now this works and it's not bad, not wrong. React router is a great package, but it is extra code which you have to write. And then often you end up storing your components that act as pages in a separate folder, which kind of replicates your route setup in code. So if you have three pages set up as pages in code, you have three page components in that pages component folder. Makes sense, I guess. Now, since that's the case, Next.js gets rid of that in-code route definition. Instead, with Next.js, you define pages and routes with files and folders. You have a special pages folder in Next.js apps, which has to be named pages. And then your structure in that folder defines the routes and paths your page supports. And of course, we're also going to learn how that works in this course. Now that simply allows us to get rid of that extra code and hence we have to write less code, we have less work and it's a highly understandable concept because it's very close to how we all started with web development. When you're getting started with just HTML and CSS and some basic JavaScript maybe, then you build basic websites by adding multiple HTML files and the names of these files or the folders in which they sit define how you can navigate between these files, how you can link these files together. And Next.js basically allows us to go back to this very basic yet understandable concept of routing. And Next.js still supports all the features we might want, like nested routes or dynamic routes with dynamic parameters and all of that. And we're going to see that in this course, of course. Now, Next.js has more amazing features, but the last key feature, which I want to point out here, 
is the feature which is most important for me labeling Next.js a full stack framework. Because Next.js also makes it easy for us as a developer to add backend code to our React project. So to build a full stack React project where we don't just have the client side code, maybe with server side pre-rendering, but where we also have standalone backend code that, for example, works with the file system or reaches out to a database. With Next.js, it's very easy to add our own backend API into our React project using Node.js code. So we can easily add such code to our Next React apps when using Next.js. And that allows us to add code for storing data to a database or to files, getting data from there, adding authentication, and all of that. That's easy to add with Next.js. We can stay in one project. We have to know some Node.js code for that, arguably, but we would have to know that anyways when we build our own backend. And then we don't have to build a standalone REST API project, but instead we can work on one project, our next project, and add all the client-side code, our React user interface, and also blend in our backend API code. That's why Next.js is amazing. And these are all the core features I wanted to point out here, and which we're of course going to learn about in depth in this course, and even more than that.